sorting a simple DSM. Now looking back at uh, MIT's break case there, we had uh, a tremendous amount of activity uh, above the axes, and uh, that's not a good uh, thing to have, as you now know. Uh, a lot of that was related just to the fact that the uh, way the dependencies were connected in the original plan weren't all that effective or efficient. And there's a very simple way of uh, correcting that, and it simply amounts to ranking the dependencies uh, in the table, just sorting them uh, from the least dependent at the top to the most dependent at the bottom. And if we were to look at 4D in the top little matrix here, look across that row, we see that, that 4D has absolutely no uh, dependencies. And as such, that would be something that we could start immediately uh, without having to refer to anything else. And then we just take, well, OK, what's the next least dependent? What's the thing with the next least number of dependents? And OK, uh, that's A. And so we go through and we rank the whole lot uh, just from least to most, and a pretty magic thing happens. Um, what happens is that you see that you reduce the above diagonal uh, potential problem areas from four down to just one. And that's a pretty significant improve for just a, a relatively simple uh, technique. You're left with that one little uh, green area above the diagonal, and it mightn't be just close in uh, like that one. It could be a fair way out. And it's one of the chicken and egg uh, situations. And we manage these by making an assumption. Uh, we might have a situation where um, we're building an automobile or a car, and we've been given an acceleration uh, performance specification that we have to meet. And that really comes down to managing uh, two criteria, uh, the horsepower available or the kilowatts available, and the uh, number of kg that the body weighs or the vehicle weighs. And so this is going to be a cross-functional battle between the powertrain division and the uh, auto body division. Uh, one saying, well, look, just give me uh, this much horsepower and we're fine. And the other guy would be saying, well, let's give me this number of kg and we'll be fine. Uh, either way, we'll meet the spec. So uh, that could be a cross-functional argument that goes on for a while. Uh, given that powertrains are so difficult to develop and you've got all the EPA requirements and loads of testing, it's likely that you'll try and make uh, the assumption, which is what you always do, you try and make it where you know most and where you have the least potential problems in having to adjust. And in this case, it would be the body. So you look at the body and you say, well, to get that acceleration with the amount of horsepower that our EPA-approved powertrain can deliver, uh, we have to have a body of 900 kg. It can't exceed that. And on that basis, we would substitute our feedback path, uh, in our case uh, here, the B to A uh, feedback path, we would substitute that with the assumption of 900 kg. So A gets its 900 kg input. The power train, train guys are happy. Uh, the rest of the team can get on with building the vehicle. And so the program moves forward. And we have just a simple serial set of tasks. They're not a cross couple one. It's simply A to B. But we made an assumption of 900. Now, we've always done this. It's been the traditional way of managing programs. Uh, and uh, the big problem being that, of course, we had no means of really monitoring uh, or logging uh, these assumptions, and we didn't tend to manage them. And so over time, uh, these assumptions disappeared into the mist of time in the uh, program, and we just know that it's 900, and we just know we're working on it. And so um, that assumption submarines through the program, and uh, we all forget about it until we... Uh, get to starting to uh, do a system integration and put bodies and engines and everything together and find out that uh, we've got a problem that we don't meet the performance figures we're supposed to and uh, the body guys just can't get there from here. And uh, so we're back into then all sorts of compromises and costly reworks and uh, falling short of performance targets and all the usual stuff that, uh, that uh, happens in programs. So on that basis, 
uh, it's submarined right through the program and it's torpedoed us uh, late in the program and that's the problem. Many of these assumptions that weren't qualified submarine through and shoot us down at the or sink us at the back end of the program. Uh, if you've got a system for managing these assumptions, which the uh, program automatically does, it flags them and makes sure they're being managed and uh, calls out a uh, hit list for senior management if this stuff is not done so that the program is being proactively managed and the risk of submarining assumptions is being managed and you don't have uh, so-called unforeseen crisis when in fact they're actually quite easy to uh, to see and manage.